धन्यवाद श्री विंसेंट पालाजी Thank you, sir, for giving me this an opportunity <coughs> to speak about the motion of thanks to the honourable president, sir. Uh, I join hands with all the colleagues who have spoken about the motion of thanks, sir. The honourable president has spoken about. north east especially the development in the north east in the present government i come from the north east but very unfortunate the president fails to mention about the socio ethnic and religious problems in the north east in manipur in manipur for the last 8 months there's no internet why because the government doesn't want the people of india or the rest of the world to know how they failed in manipur in manipur out of 119 camps relief camps the condition is deplorable when manipur is affected the whole of the north is is in a problem the border between india and the rest of our neighbor countries has been mishandled today the north is as we i stand here full of drugs therefore there is a rise almost 70% of drugs in the north is because of mishandled by the government in nagaland almost 10 years after signing the framework agreement between the government and the stakeholders in nagaland there's no decision because of ego because of lack of knowledge about the culture the language the history of nagas nagas they have a unique culture nagas they have a history therefore this government blindly sign an agreement without a conclusion they know how to sign an agreement how to market but they don't know how to conclude the problems of nagas therefore in the north east if the problem of manipur and nagaland is not solved the solution in the north east is far from reality so what is written what is spoken prepared for the honorable president has been misled by the present government i demand that uh, the government take serious of the problems of manipur and nagaland then only there will be a development for our people in the north east the honorable president also talk about education in the north east the she failed to mention about the ambitions and aspirations of the people of meghalaya the khasi language and the garo language which has been decided unanimously by the legislative assembly of meghalaya 5 years ago that this should be listed in the eighth schedule in the constitution of india the bjp has made a lips promises false promises during the election but till date this has not come to reality so the people of meghalaya are still waiting and being fooled by the central government so i demand from the government that the khasi language and the garo language should be included in the h schedule as per the aspirations of the people then only the education for the people of north east and the process should be started as soon as possible sir after for the last 10 years this government has come in power i am a christian i could understand the insecurity amongst the christians be it at any time whatever functions happens the christians are the at the receiving end one of the issues for example 
in Manipur also, more than 300 churches has been burnt, demolished, demolished. And people, more than 500 pastors, nuns, and priests has been arrested for silly cases. This is the problem. This is the fate of the Christians. There's an increase of almost 200% in terms of harassment to the Christians for the last five years. Recently, if you've seen in social media and the news, we always feel proud that the Ram Mandir a celebration has been done as a Christians. But if you see, at the same time, people used to put flags in the churches on top of the statue of Christ in many church in India. So it's an insult for the Christians. Christians are only 2.3 or 2.5%. They have contributed a lot in terms of capacity building and education building, or the nation building in terms of education and social works. But the way the treatment they have got from the central government and the respective state government run by the BJP, it's really a harassment and the social boycott in many incidents against the Christians is a concern for all of us. Therefore, I demand from the government that the safety of the minority, safety of the Christians should be taken care of and until unless we consider, until unless every citizen has the right to worship, has the right to live, I think the progress of India will be hampered. So another very important thing, tribals being the Northeast, being any parts of India, they feel insecure for their jobs to be taken away. In Meghalaya, my state, in Manipur, they have demanded for inner line permit. Manipur, the government has given the inner line permit. Whereas in Meghalaya, a consensus has been taken in the floor of the house by the Meghalaya State Legislative Assembly. But till date, no action, no decision has been taken by the government of India. So the people of Meghalaya think if they don't take a decision or they don't take a decision, I think they are not competent. Therefore, the youth of Meghalaya and the people of Meghalaya are losing faith in the central government. So I demand that a decision on this issue should be taken so that the people's hopes and aspirations will be fulfilled. Another very important thing the Honorable President has mentioned about roads and, connection and connectivity in the Northeast. The National Highway No. 6, which connects between Assam and Meghalaya, as I'm speaking today, almost every week, two, three days, there's a jam and blockage. Every week, at least one or two people will die on the road because of accidents. The road is in very deplorable conditions. We have written to the Honorable Minister. We met him. We thought that to expand, to widen the road, but no action has been taken, not even repaired. Therefore, I think it's very important for the government, central government, to take action on these issues until and unless we have a proper road connectivity, a proper road, good road and good conditions of the road, I will not be able to develop. And the connectivity for the Barak Valley especially uh, are going through the National Highway 6. So another very important the drug abuse in the Northeast. As I said, because of the porous in the border, there's increase of almost 70% in the last nine years in terms of drug abuse to our youth. And in Northeast, there's almost 6.34% of the consumptions of drugs and compared to only 2.06% in the national average. So three times of the people who are fallen prey to the drugs because of unemployment, because of development of the people of Northeast. Therefore, I suggest that a special law should be taken, a special law should be framed so that the people of the Northeast and the youth of the Northeast should be 
promoted should help to solve the problems from the drug abuse. And another last point is like employment and poverty. I come from a state with matrilineal society. I could see that many of the women, many of the young people, when they are unemployed, and so many single women who take care of the family. So the government should have a policy to take care of the tribals who are not employed, but who are taking for the family for the education of the uh, children. So with Haryana story, where the youth of Haryana wants to go to Israel to get a job. Same, so many are from the Northeast. They also have that aspirations that they should get a job wherever it be for their livelihood. Therefore, I request the government to take a serious issue for the employment of the people of the Northeast as well as the whole of India so that they can fulfill their promises during the elections. So with these words, sir, thank you for giving me time. I conclude my speech. Thank you, sir. Shri Santosh Pandeji. Thank you very much, sir, for giving me this opportunity.